house reeked of urine and feces and nicotine. Empty food containers and beer bottles sat in various piles atop the dirty and shit-stained carpet. A stack of porno DVDs on a coffee table amongst cigarette butts and syringes. On the TV, a woman dolefully moaned as a man twice her size thrust into her with savage fervor again and again and again. At the rear of the house, a pit bull barked and clawed at the door, hungering for a visitor uninvited. Follow me, the man said and led me to a bedroom where an assortment of firearms had been laid across a mostly bare mattress patchworked with urine and other stains. The man was tall and thick-set, balding with a graying beard. He wore a once-white wife-beater become fetid with sweat. Here they all is, he said. I stepped to the bed and lifted a Colt .38 and flicked open the chamber, spun it around, then flicked it shut. Set it down next to a Taurus 9mm and then picked up a Mac 11. Ever use one of them before? He asked. I aimed at the wall and looked down the sights, and said, no. Tough to handle for most first-timers. I set the Mac 11 down. How much for all of them? Well, he said and scratched at his beard, how about five? Thousand? The man nodded. Okay. I've got two on me. Let me go to the car and get the rest. Ah, he said and held out his palm. Give me the two now while you go outside. I laughed. Why? You think I'm going to run off empty-handed? You might be planning to rob me, is what I think. So I'm gonna hold on to that their money in case it's all yours. I fished the wad of cash out of my pocket and put it in his hand. Whatever. It's yours anyway. He smiled and nodded at the door. Carry on then. In the hall, a door to another room eased open a mere inch or two as I walked near. A little girl peeked out. The man noticed and stomped over and yanked the door shut. I continued outside. When I returned with the money, I asked, was that your daughter? The man nodded and said, I don't want her near the guns as we continued past the TV from which Smut still played. I handed him the rest of the cash in the bedroom and he counted each bill, then leaned down and picked up a large black duffel bag and tossed it onto the bed. You can start loading now. Total of 12, pistols, machine pistols, a submachine gun, and a shotgun. Ammo, too. When I was done, I zipped the bag and hoisted its strap onto my shoulder. All right then, I said. Hold on a sec, the man said. How about some drugs? No thanks. Oh, come on. They didn't send me here to buy drugs. You ain't got to use their money. Wait here. Let me show you what I got. He left the room and disappeared around the corner, and soon after the little girl came peeking through the doorway at me. She was very young with greasy blonde hair and careworn blue eyes. Haggard in a way no child her age should ever be. I nodded at her and smiled and then she leaned further into the doorway and mouthed the words, he's not my dad. The fuck you doing out of your room? The man roared and stomped down the hall, startling the girl, who immediately retreated to her room and slammed the door shut. I ain't fucking messing around. He yelled while pounding on her door at the same time the barking and clawing of the pit bull outside had crescendoed into a hellish cacophony of rabidity. Having been frisked upon arrival, I was not carrying my personal gun. I set the bag down and unzipped. It and reached inside. What are you doing? He asked from the doorway, his abrupt entrance jarring my attention. I need a box of .38 rounds, I lied. He narrowed his eyes and studied me. There's already some in there. I need one more. He stepped into the room and came chest to chest with me, his breath rank with beer and cigarettes. That'll cost you extra. Fine. He grinned. Teeth like putrescent wood. Try some of this, he said and handed me a syringe with honey-colored liquid inside. What is it? Heroin. No thanks. I held it for him to take and he pushed my hand back toward me. Try it, he insisted. I don't do heroin. 
He stared at me, took the syringe, walked over to a closet in an adjacent wall, and began rummaging inside. Just a box of .38s. He asked while I quickly and quietly dug through the duffel bag for a gun and its respective rounds. Yeah, I said as I got hold of a Ruger GP100 revolver and a matching box of .357s and popped the cylinder open and fed three bullets inside. I shut it and brought the revolver up and, as I pointed it at the man, found that he'd already beaten me to the draw with the Glock 19 he'd frisked from me earlier. I knew you was going to rob me, he said. I kept the revolver pointed at him. I don't want to rob you. I want the girl. His jaw tensed. You ain't taking my daughter. She's not your daughter. He stared at me. You ain't taking her, but I'll give you some alone time with her if that's what YA want, he said with a smirk. I tightened my grip. No. She's leaving with me. His smile faded, and as it did, he fired. The shot jolted my shoulder and I fired back as a second shot knocked me onto the mattress. I rolled off and onto the floor as another round punched through the wall above my head, and then he bounded out of the room, firing off and missing another shot as he went. A silence from thunder scarred settled amongst the odor of gun smoke then rang into the hellhound roar and the hungered scratching of the beast who so desperately wanted to tear into flesh and bone. Blood spread on my shirt from my shoulder and abdomen like blooming roses, and with each movement, a stabbing thorn. Enough effort and pain and I was able to hook my hand into the duffel strap. Outside, the barking ceased and the rapid clicking of claws on tile followed. Muscled body bounding around corners and off the walls until the cropped eared and vicious grey beast burst into the room and lunged at me with gnashing teeth. From the revolver exploded my only round into the head of the bull. Its roar fell to a whimper as it crumpled to the ground and momentarily fumbled to free the fire from its skull, and when the convulsions finally ended, so did the beast. A newfound silence. I hurriedly took more rounds from the duffel bag and filled the cylinder, and with the loaded gun, I heaved myself from the floor and limped to the doorway, looked left and right and saw that the girl's door was wide open. I slid along the wall to stay upright and leaned into her room and saw nothing more than a dirty mattress, no girl and nowhere inside to hide. I slid down the wall in the other direction across my previous blood smear, past the living room and into the kitchen. Strewn across the countertops and appliances were unwashed dishes with mold and maggot remainders of meals. Open wrappers and containers. Putridity of rotten meat. The buzzing of flies beckoned by filth and an open door leading into the backyard. I stepped outside into the humid afternoon and the overgrown grass. Past the chain-link fence were woods grown thick and deep, and from those woods, I could hear leaves crunching beneath the feet of the fleeing man and the sobbing of a child not his own. Had I not felt oblivion settling in, I would have taken off after them. Later on, after my wounds had been tended to, I sent a message to the men he did not know worked for me. Men who will do whatever I ask of them. It read, burn the house and search the woods. Find the girl. Kill the man. <laughs>